Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today is a very special day because it's the end of our disassembly of our big block. This video series is how to build a big block Chevy. This is video three. If you've missed the other two, I've put them in a big playlist here on YouTube so you can watch it start to finish and by the end you too will be a big block building expert. Um, but the reason I say it's a big day today is because this is the final stage of disassembly so we can send it off to the machine shop and then when we get it back, we're putting it back together. So that's what makes this kind of cool because this is kind of like the final big disassembly day. There's a little bit more we have to do once it gets back from the machine shop, but we'll worry about that later. Um, there's really nothing much more to say. Let's just go ahead and get into it. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is remove the timing chain cover that's going to involve uh, removing all these bolts, they're 7 sixteenths, all around the front of the engine here. All right, so uh, the timing chain cover actually sits on two dowels on either side of the engine. What we can do is take a screwdriver, insert it here. <clears throat> so the dowels are actually what center this, so everything is um, concentric with each other. And then uh, once you've broken it loose, it kind of just comes off like that. All right, so this is our timing chain here, and you can tell how absolutely worn it out it is by grabbing it and wiggling it about. It really shouldn't have this much movement. You can almost get it off without removing the uh, cog for the cam. That's how loose it is. And, uh, oh my gosh, I almost got it. That was close. Uh, this is actually a plastic cog. Uh, they did this back in the 70s sometime because they thought it was quieter. It just falls apart and ruins everything. So what is actually happening is the camshaft is behind the crank. So you're actually getting a retarded situation and you're not making as much power, which is not good. So. This is junk, this is junk, and the drive gear off, the crank is junk. All three of those things can go right in the trash. Now we can remove these three half inch bolts here. Just like that. Okay, so now we can remove the camshaft cog by getting two flathead screwdrivers and prying it off there. It was very easy, in fact. And this will give us enough clearance to remove all that. All right, so uh, now is the big exciting moment where we start taking pistons out. I'm gonna show how to do one of these, whichever one's the best to film. I'll admit it, I'm human, best one to film, but all of them are exactly the same. Uh, and what we're gonna do is remove the caps first. Now, if you're building some sort of high performance race engine, you're gonna wanna loosen this uh, nut first and then this one and kind of walk it off evenly. But uh, since we're not doing that, you can just take them off normally. And these are uh, 9 16 nuts, by the way. Forgot to mention the size. There we go. So there's a few different ways to get a piston out of an engine here and get the cap separated. Uh, we like to use a big screwdriver like this and then grab a hammer and tap the back of it. Got my plastic hammer here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, tap this down. So now that the uh, main cap has been uh, broken loose from the rod here, uh, it is actually cocked a little bit. The gap on this side is like double this on this side. Actually, there's really no gap to be spoken of here. So what we can do is grab a plastic hammer and tap this stud here to even it out. So hopefully we can walk it off. And there we go, cap is removed. So um, you can see the bearing is actually still on the uh, crankshaft here. It kind of wants to spin around, but I wanted to mention this cap has to stay with this rod. So when you're sending your engine off to the machine shop, these two have to be together forever. Okay, and before we go any further, I want to mention that you want to rotate the engine to where uh, the rods are exposed like this and not deep down here like this. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to remove the piston. And now we're going to um, seat the piston down a little bit more so that the bearing will uh, clear the rod. A little bit more.
There we go. Bearings removed. That's what it looks like there. Okay, so on our bearing here, uh, you can see silver, right? So it's not copper, it's not exposed like that. So this bearing's not in terrible shape. Uh, if you did see like a big copper gash or something or some odd wear pattern, then those are no good. So we're not gonna keep that bearing, throwing that in the trash, we're rebuilding the thing. Brand new bearings, they're coming. So we're gonna hit the top, uh, bottom of the piston while I'm having my hand down here to catch it. There we go, and that's what our little baby piston looks like here. And we gotta keep this all together, so what we can do before we send it off is put the cap back on and just put them on finger tight. So this is your primary compression ring. This is what does most of the work. This is a secondary backup for that. And this one down here, this ring, is your oil retentioning ring. If this breaks, then your car's gonna burn a bunch of oil. So here is our uh, piston with our connecting rod and uh, the bearing material is all gone. I've removed those and thrown them in the trash. What we can do though is prep this for the machine shop itself. When you're putting the cap back on, make sure that this timer here and this groove here are on the same side. Okay, then we can put the nuts on here uh, just so they don't get lost or anything. And just like that, it is ready for the machine shop. So what the machine shop's gonna do is torque this down and run a resizing hone through here to make sure that it's perfectly circular after a lifetime of doing this. So one thing I wanna go over before we go any further is you can see this little two on the side of the second piston's um, connecting rod on the cap and the connecting rod itself. It has two twos, which signifies this is the second one. If yours doesn't have this kind of labeling, go ahead and grab a Sharpie and do it anyway. So now we're gonna remove the crankshaft that involves moving these five uh, main caps here. Now they need to be numbered and fortunately for us on this big block, it is numbered one, two, three, four, and five. But if yours isn't, go ahead and grab a Sharpie and mark them down or if you're a true baller, grab a stamp and hammer them in. So now we're gonna take a 13 16 uh, impact socket here with our half inch gun. If you don't have a impact gun, big brake bar is gonna be a friend here. We're gonna leave them just sitting there for right now. So we're gonna hold the bolt up like this and smack it like that, and that breaks the main cap loose. We can just remove the whole thing together like that. And then just do that for the four other caps, and you're good. So the main bearing wear on this is pretty good. There's no um, copper exposed or anything. Um, I'm still gonna uh, replace them, but as far as use goes, it's not too bad. There we go. We can go ahead and toss this. Okay, so when you're moving your crankshaft here, you wanna make sure and bring it up as straight as level as you can, exactly uh, perpendicular to the block surface, because if not, it'll just get stuck in the bearings. Just like that. All right, so before we move on, I wanna talk about bearings. So obviously a uh, crankshaft is gonna spin on this bearing that's gonna handle uh, centrifugal rotation forces, but what stops it from going backward and forward? Also called thrust motion. Well, it's this surface here and on the backside as well, those are thrust bearings on the side here, which also need to be replaced. And while we're here, I wanna go over the rear main seal. Now a Gen 4 big block, which this is, has a two piece rear main seal. So here's the top piece. The bottom piece is in the fifth uh, main cap we already removed. This is what holds uh, engine oil in your engine and prevents it from spilling out the back. 
So if you have a rear main seal leak, this is what you need to replace. All right, so now we can take out the bearings here. And we're gonna start with the rear one, because <clears throat> it can be a little tricky. So grabbing a uh, large pry bar like this and catching its edge and just uh, maneuvering that up would be a big help. So now we can remove that. There we go. Take all five bearings here out and toss those. We'll be going with new ones. Okay, so this is where our numbering really comes in handy. So one goes like this. And the first one, just wanna make sure it's just not going anywhere for, we're basically setting it up for the machine shop. When putting on your main cap here, there's an arrow pointing this way and the arrow pointing that way uh, denotates the front of the engine. So make sure all your arrows are pointing the same direction, frontward. And on the main caps, I've already taken the cap side of the bearings out. And then for the other side of the two-piece rear main seal, I took that out as well. It just pulls straight out, it's really easy. So the machine shop is going to send a long line home through all five of the uh, journals here. And uh, what that does is make sure everything's round and everything is concentric with each other. All right, so the next thing we're gonna worry about is there's a rod here that pushes down on the mechanical fuel pump. Uh, newer engines don't really have this. I don't think a Gen 5 big block has it, but a Gen 4 like this one definitely does. Um, and that pushes down on a little arm that sits right here off of the uh, camshaft and that squirts fuel up into your carburetor. Now, if you're gonna go fuel injection, this is something you're gonna have to think about. But for our purposes, we need to remove it. So we grab a half inch wrench here to remove this plug. Like that. And then Sometimes you can work on it and just get through your fingers like this. Helps to tilt the engine. There we go. See the needle nose from the bottom, grab it and walk it forward. Good tip. And there we are. So the reason we took this out now and the reason we haven't taken the cam out now, this will prevent the camshaft from coming out. If you do not have one of these because you have a Gen 5 or something, you don't have that problem and you can remove it earlier. All right, so now we can finally remove the camshaft here. Now, when you're removing it, it's a little tricky due to the bearings being in there and the camshaft obviously being lobed. So, getting it started is no big deal, but... You just gotta kinda work it and work with it and jiggle it up and down and support it as best you can while it comes out because it only can come out the one way. You're basically matching this bearing surface to go through um, this journal here. And if it's uh, not exactly parallel with the journal surface, the camshaft will never come out. So these are the lobes of your camshaft here and your lifter sits on top of it. And that's what actually tells your valves to open and close um, and this spins in relationship with your crankshaft. Now, if this lobe surface were to be flattened, then that valve, whatever it's controlling, an intake or exhaust valve, won't open. Or it'll open very, very slightly, and it won't be proper, and then your engine's no good. All right, so now we have our big block completely prepped and ready for the machine shop, so we're gonna go ahead and load her up load her on up into the truck using my engine crane. Do not attempt to pick one of these up by yourself. So these are the supplies we're taking to the machine shop. We got the block fully prepped, ready to rock. We've got all of our uh, pistons and rods and caps over there. And we also have our crankshaft right here. So that can all go to our automotive machine shop and be handled. So the next thing we need to do is attach a chain, which we've done with one bolt in the front here, looped it over. Another bolt here. So this is the uh, engine mount or engine crane relation we have here and we have this bolt here so that way when force is applied and it's uneven, the load's uneven, it just doesn't go zip all the way to one side and that's never good because if your finger's in the way you're losing it. And I like to put tension on the uh, engine crane itself 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put tension on the chain here. And what that's gonna do is take tension off of the bolts. So if you tried taking these bolts off without um, tension being on this chain, it could put all the weight on a bolt you're not really paying attention to, and it does have the potential to bend it. I mean, probably not, but why take the risk? So with that loaded, now we can remove these bolts. And now, our engine is free to be loaded into our pickup truck. So with your big block load in the back of your pickup truck, I have some cardboard down. You just basically want a buffer between your big block and your bed. So that way, either don't get wrecked. Uh, wood's usually better for this, but I had cardboard laying around, so that's what we're using. And I have two ratchet straps here, holding it in an X pattern uh, through the mains, through the cylinders. So. It's not gonna go anywhere anywhere in the event in the event of an accident. So that is our big block Chevrolet mostly disassembled. Actually, it's pretty much all the way disassembled, and off to our engine machine shop where they can run all kinds of hones through it, bore it 30 uh, over, and uh, take care of it in a machine shop sort of way. Also, they're gonna hot tank it to get all the grime and crud off of it that's not engine. Probably put some new freeze plugs in it. They're also gonna put in new cam bearings. Uh, and a couple other new assorted plugs and stuff. Uh, but I'm really excited about that. Make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube. I'm gonna keep putting it these videos in this really big playlist so you can watch them start to finish and uh, build a big block right next to me. That's what the whole point of this video series is. I'm super excited to keep going on this. The next video should be up relatively quickly. Thank you so very much for watching. All applicable links are located down below in the description. And I'll catch you next time.